let's take a look at what inequalities look like when we have a single variable inequality. So we want to know when 2x plus 5 is less than or equal to 13. Well, we know with our 13 right here, if we have 13 dots stacked up, we know this has to be less than, so it has to be less than this number 13, or it can be equal to. So this side can actually be equal to 13. So thinking about what different numbers might make that true, we can just start looking at different, different numbers in here that might make that true. So I know if I substitute a zero in for here, that that will make this true, right? So two times zero plus five, is that going to be less than or equal to 13? Well, two times zero is just zero, and then plus five, so five is less than or equal to 13. So zero I know is going to work. And I can keep going, I know all the numbers less than zero are probably going to work because that will be negative here. And so two times a negative number is going to, when I add it to five, it's going to decrease that value. So anything beyond zero is definitely going to be true. Might wanna try some other numbers in there, like perhaps two or three, like what's, what's the largest number that's actually going to make that true? So let's give it a try. Let's try two. So two times two plus five is less than or equal to 13. Well, two times two is four, so four plus five yeah, that's less than or equal to 13. So I know two's going to work. So we can keep going up, I guess. We could try a three. So two times three is six. Uh, six plus five is going to be 11. That is less than, so three is going to work. What about four? So two times four is eight. Eight plus five is going to be 13. Oh, that's equal to 13. So my four is going to work. Well, will five work here? So two times five is 10 plus five is 15, that's going to be too great. In fact, once we get past four, that, that value is going to be too much and it's not going to make this true. So I know four is my boundary point right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a four right here. And it can be four. And since it can be four, I can fill in that dotted, that circle to say four is included. It doesn't just get really, really close to four. And then all of the other numbers for x that make that true, when I substitute these values, I know zero, two, three, all these in-between numbers, all these decimals and fractions are also going to make that true. And so I can just graph this way. And then I can write my algebraic solution, which is x is less than or equal to four. That's what's going to make this true. Now the interesting part about this is this is related to an equation. And we can use that equation to get this boundary point of four. So 2x plus five equal to 13 is actually going to give me the highest or the lowest um, value, the boundary where I'm looking at whether I go to the left or the right in this case. So if I subtract five from both sides and solve this equation, using the um, subtraction property of equality or addition property if you want to think about negative numbers. So then I have 2x is equal to 8 and then I'm going to use the division property of equality, divide by 2, divide by 2, and I have x is equal to 4 and this gives me my boundary uh, point right here. So once I have that boundary point, I can use this original inequality to test, to interval test, to see which side is true. Well, I know because I already figured it out right here, but I would just test a number to the left and a number to the right. So in this case, when I tested five over here, I found that that was false because two times five plus five is not less than or equal to 13 because I have 15 less than or equal to 13 and that is false. So I know that's not part of my solution. Over here, when I tested something like zero, where I have two times zero plus five is less than or equal to 13, I found that that was true. And so that is part of the solution, which is why this side of the boundary is shaded. 